I'm gonna show you how to make a soup with hearty Italian flavors and kale and, you guessed it, gnocchi. There are only six ingredients in this entire recipe, so it was really important to make sure that each ingredient is gonna deliver with flavor and texture and really contribute something into our soup. Now, I wanna point out that we're gonna be using some canned diced tomatoes, but these are fire roasted tomatoes. And that's important because they're roasted, so they have that extra flavor in there. So before I do anything else, I just wanna put this 14 and a half ounce can here in the strainer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to strain out the liquid while I prepare our kale. So let's talk about kale. It's gone through a lot in the last like 20 years. It went from being that garnish on the plate to now making smoothies every day. And I embrace it, I love kale. And there are two main varieties of kale. This is curly kale and this is Tuscan kale. It's also called lachinato kale. And then I've also heard it be referred to as dinosaur kale. And I am gonna be using this in today's soup. It is quite tender, but I wanted to show you that sometimes the stems can be fibrous, even with this Tuscan kale. So if you find that you have stalks that have a stem running down that are pretty thick and fibrous, I wanna show you how to remove them. What you do is you take the leaf, you bend it in half so that you have the stem right on top. And then using a chef's knife, you assume that the stem right at the top is nice and tender. So what I'm gonna do is make a cut right here and then cut it all the way off. So what you're left with is the tender leaf and the fibrous stem. So I'll do the same thing with the curly kale. This is already sort of bent for me. Again, this is gonna be nice and tender after cooking up here. And there we go. You can save that for your rabbits, I don't know. So I'm going to just grab a few bunches at a time and just give it a nice chop. Now I did find another one that is pretty thick, two more that have pretty thick stems on them. So I'm gonna take that stem out too because again, if I was making a long cooking soup or a braise, that's when I think the stem would have a little bit more time to break down and tenderize, but I don't want something that thick, you know, in the soup. I'm just gonna go through and continue chopping the kale. Okay, that is it for prep for this recipe. Let's go over to the stove. We're all ready to go. So we're gonna start with a tablespoon of prepared pesto. It's a convenience product. And again, because we're only using six ingredients in this recipe, I mean, this is like a bang for your buck type of deal. We've got, what, five or six other ingredients right here. So a lot of flavor. I'm gonna heat the prepared pesto over medium high heat until it is simmering. And stay with me here. I know that this is definitely a non-conventional way to start cooking. But imagine all of that flavor from the garlic and the oil and the cheese and pine nuts and basil in that one tablespoon there. So it's starting to bubble right now. So it's gonna bloom all that garlic and the natural aromatics that are in there. I'm gonna add the drained tomatoes, but don't get rid of the tomato juice. We're gonna be adding that in a little bit. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to stir the tomatoes a little bit and I'm gonna let them cook until all of the liquid has evaporated. What's gonna happen is the tomatoes are gonna to start to soften and then begin to brown. So that'll take about five minutes. Oh, this already smells so good. So now I'm gonna go in with a potato masher now that they're all softened and there's a lot of fawn starting to form. I'm gonna mash the tomatoes and that way they're gonna become part of the soup. And now it's time to add our liquid. I've got four cups of chicken broth. And again, I'm gonna add that reserved tomato juice as well. All right, I'm gonna go in there with this wooden spoon, scrape up all that fond on the bottom of the pot because that fond is flavor. All those dark bits are just pockets of deliciousness. I also have some chicken. I've got two boneless, skinless chicken breasts that I've gone ahead and trimmed, and I'm gonna be adding it now into the soup. The chicken is going to poach. 
So I'm gonna bring this to a simmer, cover the pot, reduce the heat to medium, and cook for about 10 to 12 minutes until the chicken registers 160 degrees. The chicken is beautifully poached, and now I'm gonna go, while I let this cool slightly, I'm gonna go stir the kale into the soup and let that cook five to eight minutes until just wilted and tender. While the kale cooks away, I'm going to take this opportunity to shred our chicken using two forks. It's really the easiest way to do it. You also could use a knife, but I love that rustic texture of shredded chicken, especially in a soup like this. Don't go too crazy here because you just want bite-sized pieces. All right, I'm gonna go check on the kale. Oh boy, that looks so delicious. The kale is vibrant green, it's nice and tender, it's wilted, it's cooking down beautifully. So now it's time to add the gnocchi. So this is vacuum packed gnocchi, shelf stable. This is the stuff you wanna use for this recipe. If you have frozen gnocchi or the other refrigerated kind of gnocchi you find in the grocery store, best to leave that for another recipe. You want the shelf stable stuff for this one. So I'm gonna add eight ounces, which is half of a package. And I'm gonna cook this for about four minutes until the gnocchi are tender and floating. The gnocchi are floating, so I know that that means they're tender. And I'm gonna add the shredded chicken and any juices from the chicken as well. Just add everything back into the pot. And I'm also gonna add a couple more tablespoons of the pesto that we had added up top in the beginning of this recipe. And this is just gonna kind of round out the soup and give it a little bit more bright pesto flavor, the garlic, the cheese, the basil, olive oil. It's just gonna take it up another notch. And I'm just gonna cook this about one minute until it's warmed through. And then it's time to taste it. All right, ladle up some soup. Wow, that broth has so much tomato presence. It's like a beautiful rusty red color because we browned the tomatoes and we used some of that tomato liquid. Let's try a gnocchi. Mm. That gnocchi completely just melted in my mouth. Let's try some of that kale. Mm. So tender, still has a little bit of texture. You do know you're eating kale but it's that really nice Tuscan kale, so tender and just has a nice almost vegetal flavor to it. This is just a soup of my dreams, it really is. The pesto and the gnocchi really took the soup to the next level and it became such a satisfying meal.